This is just the beginning of a life that in many ways they can't even imagine. And that doesn't mean it's gonna be perfect. That doesn't mean that storms won't continue to come in, but now they have you, your spirit residing in them to guide them, lead them, comfort them. They have your church called Two Rivers, the community of believers, brothers and sisters eternally. Remind us of to take this message out to a dark world. And it's not because we're any better than any person that doesn't know you. It's solely because we have witnessed a miracle in our own lives. All right, good morning. How's everybody today? All right, all right, all right. Thank you so much for... Uh, joining us this morning here at Two Rivers. My name's Ron, I'm a part of the team here. Welcome to all of you in the room. Welcome to those of you online. Welcome to those of you in the overflow room. Welcome to those of you over here sitting in the seats where you can't see me. Um, so we did, uh, we, we did put in some different seats over here. We took out the bigger chairs, put in uh, uh, the black plastic chairs. They're just a little bit smaller, but it actually allowed us to get 40 extra seats in the room. And so some of you can only probably see me on TV and we're going to work on that. We're going to move the drums back and anything, but anyway, Hey y'all welcome. Um, yeah. So, uh, today is a very special day at two rivers. It's baptism Sunday and, uh, just one of my favorite days. I love every Sunday, but when we get together and get to celebrate baptism, it's always just very, very, very special. So uh, 25 years ago, uh, when Two Rivers was very beginning, just about 25 years ago from right now, we had started in April and we needed to baptize some people. And <clears throat> so we didn't, we were meeting in uh, the Bryan Middle School and they didn't have a baptistry in their school gym for some reason, and so we had to figure it out. So Debbie and I and our four boys we were living out on a piece of property out towards Defiance. It wasn't our property, but it was a 700-acre piece of property. I wish it had been my property. I'd be a millionaire today if it were, but uh, we, we, there was a house there and a barn and then 700 acres of property, and so we decided for our first baptism that we would just invite the whole church out and at that time the whole church was less than 100 people and they would fit in this barn and so I went and bought this big stock tank at Charlie's farm and home filled it up with water invited the church out invited the people that were going to be baptized out and there was this one lady her name was Sue and Sue um, wanted to get baptized and Sue a beautiful lady loves Sue but she was pretty prim and proper and I don't mean that condescendingly but like the whole Wait, barn, stock tank, you know, bugs, spiders, snakes, all that. I'm not sure. That's not what I signed up for. And so I was kind of talking to her like, hey, it's going to be okay. I promise it, it'll, it'll be good. And uh, she was somewhat hesitant, but she showed up. And I remember she stepped into that stock tank and she sat down. And I looked at her and I said, Sue, do you have anything you want to say uh, before we baptize you today? And she said, yes, I do. And she said, uh, many of you know I was a little hesitant about this, coming out here to a barn and being baptized in a stock tank. And she said, this week, I actually, in my Bible reading, was reading about the birth of Jesus. And she said, Jesus came to earth and he was born in a barn. And he was placed in a heart, horse trough among all of the farm animals and the farm smells and all the stuff. And she said, I was a little bit hesitant. And then I read that and God just like showed me Nothing could be more appropriate than this. And man, I baptized her hair, makeup, and everything. And she came up out of that water, and we all had a shout in time. And uh, I was thinking about that this week, because we've been baptizing people ever since to the glory of God. And I've been explaining baptism to people ever since, many times over the 25 years. And so I want to, in a pretty short period of time today, just explain to you exactly what's going on here today. We're going to baptize 40 people this morning over the course of three services. I think there's 18 people in this service, so my time is short, but I want to make sure that you fully understand um, what it is that we are doing in this place today. And so I use an outline, I've been using it for many years just to help explain 
baptism, and my outline is questions. So here we go. Let me run through this with you all to make sure that we're all on the same page when we baptize in a few minutes. So question number one is simply this, um, why do we baptize? And I would say to you, because biblically, scripturally, it's very obvious that baptism is an important thing. Uh, first of all, Jesus commanded it. It's what we call the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19, and 20. And in that scripture, as Jesus was coming to the, the very last moments here on earth, he told his followers as he was about to ascend into heaven, and by the way, he ascended into heaven. He's seated there today, ready to come back. If he wants to come back before we get done with this service, I'm good with that, right? Like we can just carry our celebration on up to heaven. But as Jesus was ascending to heaven, he said, go make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So Jesus was basically saying, all the things that you've seen and heard from me, all the things that I've taught, now you go teach that to other people. And when people place their faith and trust in me, then you baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Also, Jesus modeled that in his own life. When he was beginning his public ministry in Mark chapter 9, it says that Jesus came to John, right, at, at the um, Jordan River to be baptized. And, and so John, when he saw Jesus, said, behold, the the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And in that scene when Jesus got baptized, the voice of God comes from heaven and says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus took the time to be baptized and model it for us. So I hope you see that at the beginning of Jesus' public ministry, he took time to be baptized and model it. And at the end of his public ministry, before he ascended into heaven, he said, now you go and teach all the things that you've heard me teach and then baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which is what we are doing here today. So it was very, very important to Jesus. And it also was very important to the early church. And we're a part of that church still carrying on this tradition uh, 2,000 years later, but the early church on the day of Pentecost, Peter preached this sermon and he told everybody about Jesus and that he had come to die on the cross to save us from our sins. And it says that the people literally, that it hit them right in the heart that day. They were listening to pre Peter preach and they heard the story of Jesus and they said, how do we respond to this message? And Peter said, you need to repent of your sins and then be baptized. So it was very evident in the early church. Question number two what is the purpose of baptism? And I would, in one sentence, simply say that baptism is public identification with Jesus Christ. Baptism is public identification with Jesus Christ. It's people standing up in front of us today and saying, you know what? I am a follower of Jesus Christ. I am in him. He's in me. I'm not my own. I've been bought with a price. I am a card-carrying, flag-flying member of the family of God, and I don't care who knows about it. He's my savior. I'm on the Jesus team. I love Jesus. That's what's about to happen here in just a few minutes as folks are gonna stand up and give publicly identify with Jesus. They're going to acknowledge a decision they've already made in their life as they go through the waters of baptism in front of all of us today, which is most spectacular. Matthew chapter 10 says this, whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven, but whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. This is a way to go public and to acknowledge to everybody I'm a follower of Jesus. Now, it is um, essential that every one who has placed their faith in Jesus does this. It's not necessary for salvation. I'll get that to, to that in a minute. But it is certainly an act of obedience. And so it's symbolic of a decision that they've already made. It's like my wedding ring. I wear this wedding, wedding ring, and this wedding ring is symbolic of a decision that I made 36 plus years ago to marry Debbie. One of the best decisions of my life ever. You know what I'm saying, right? Like 36 plus years ago, I uh, stood before a church full of people and Debbie and committed my life to her and she committed her life to me. We are married. Now, I wear this wedding ring as a symbol of that. If I took this wedding ring off this morning, I would still be married, Right? Like, this is symbolic of the fact that I am married to Debbie. By the way, I don't ever take my wedding ring off. I'm 64 years old, but I'm still good looking. I, I, I mean, you would think, right? Like, you would think by the time you got to be 64 that gals wouldn't be hitting on you, but it's not true. They're still hitting on me. Anyway, 
I digress. Number three, you weren't supposed to laugh at that. <laughs> Number three, how do we baptize? We baptize by immersion. It means that you're gonna see in a minute, we're gonna put people under the water and we're going to bring them up out of the water. Um, we do that because it's what we see in scripture. So the original, the, the word in the original Greek language is baptizo. It was a word that was taken from secular culture and that word in secular culture was used to talk about dipping or plunging. It was used to describe a ship that sank or cloth that was being uh, put under to be dyed a particular color or a cucumber being dipped in vinegar, like literally being submersed in vinegar to turn it into a pickle. If you don't get any of that, it's like taking an Oreo cookie and sinking it in milk long enough for it to soak up all the milk and then you bring it out and you eat that thing and it's heavenly. There will be Oreos in heaven, I'm pretty sure. But it was a secular word that was incorporated uh, to describe the practice that we're doing today. Jesus himself was baptized that way. In Matthew 3, it says, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. He went up out of the water because he went down into the water, right? Scripture indicates it. In Acts chapter 8, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, it says, Philip and the eunuch went down into the water um, and, and, and Philip baptized them. John chapter three says, now John was also baptizing uh, because there was plenty of water and people were coming and being baptized. Being baptized and putting people under the water and then bringing them up out of the water also best symbolizes the death to the old life and new life in Jesus Christ. Paul wrote about it in Romans six. He said, don't you know that all who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we've been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. What was Paul saying? He was saying, he was talking about baptism and he said, when we baptize people and we put somebody under the water, it is literally this symbolic, beautiful, visual picture of somebody dying to their old way of life without Jesus Christ. The Bible says when we place our faith and trust in Jesus, we become a new creation. Old things have passed away, all has become new, and so when we baptize, we put somebody under the water, it represents a death to my old way of life, my sinful way of life without Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and we raise them up out of the water, and it represents new life with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It's why we baptize the way that we baptize. Is baptism necessary for salvation? And my answer in a word would be no. Baptism doesn't save you. Placing our faith in Jesus Christ is what saves us. Baptism is not a condition of salvation, but evidence of salvation, right? The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and 10, if you believe in your heart and declare with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, that God truly did raise him from the dead, if you believe what we say around here all the time, Jesus is the lead story, if you believe if the, the, the Jesus story and you confess Jesus as Lord and Savior and ask him to forgive you of your sins and to come into your life, you will be saved. This water in this tank never saved anyone. I say it all the time. I've said this throughout all the years. Every time I preach this sermon, we run a hose from the janitor's closet that's back in the green room and run it right out to this tank. There's nothing holy or special about that water. It's just water. This is a beautiful, symbolic picture of what has already happened in somebody's life. It's why Hebrews chapter 9.22 says that um, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This water isn't washing away anybody's sin. It is only the blood of Jesus that washes away sin. We talked about it last week, going all the way back to the first part of the Old Testament, that they had to come in and literally sacrifice a lamb 
uh, for forgiveness of their sins to maintain their relationship with God. And God did it that way. So, I mean, it's gruesome. It really is the shedding of blood. And we talked about it last week. Why do you talk about the blood at Two Rivers Church? But it's because the Bible talks about the blood. In the Old Testament, they had to go through this gruesome process of sacrificing animals, which is a reminder to them of how serious their sin was and how their relationship was broken with God. And then Jesus came on the sin and he lived on the scene and he lived the perfect life that we cannot live. And he was the perfect, spotless, unblemished lamb of God when he went to the cross and shed his blood. And now we no longer make sacrifice because because Jesus was the perfect once and all sacrifice. He did what he came to do. He rose again, he ascended to heaven, he's seated on the right hand of God. He was the perfect sacrifice. His blood offers to you and I forgiveness of our sins. His blood offers to you and I a chance to be in relationship with God. Our relationship with God was broken because of our sin. And the way we fix that is not by trying to be good people, not hoping there's a scale out there and that our good stuff outweighs our bad stuff. I've got news for you this morning. If that were the case, everybody in this room, including this guy up here, would be in deep weeds. But I'm so thankful that's not the case. I'm so thankful that God looked on me, looked on you, and loved us so much, according to John 3, that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross on our behalf so that we might have a relationship with him, not because we're awesome, but because Jesus is awesome. And he shed his blood on the cross for you and for me. So who do we baptize? Those who believe in Jesus, right? Those who believe the story that we tell over and over here in some way, shape, or form every single Sunday that Jesus is the lead story. It's all about Jesus. The only way we have a relationship with God is because of Jesus. So who do we baptize? Those who believe in Jesus. Now there's a little theological debate here. There are two theological terms. There's paedo-baptism and credo-baptism. Paedo-baptism is the theological term for infant baptism, and credo-baptism is the theological term. It literally means, I believe baptism. We practice here, I believe baptism. And by the way, if you were baptized as an infant, I'm not being disrespectful to where you came from, to your parents, to what church you were part of. We don't bash other churches or anything around here. I'm just telling you this morning, this is how we do it here. We practice credo baptism because it's what I see in scripture. I don't see infants being baptized in scripture. And the truth is an infant can't have the cognitive ability to fully understand their sin and their desperate need for a savior. And so we don't baptize people until they're old enough to understand the story of Jesus and to place their faith and trust in him. It's what we see in scripture again in Acts chapter two. It says those who accepted the message were baptized. By the way, about 3,000 of them were baptized that day. We're getting ready to baptize 18 people. Could you imagine the logistical nightmare of baptizing 3,000 people? Right, and you get up and you start that service and like, hey, hope you brought a lunch because we're gonna be here for a minute. We're about to baptize 3,000 people. In Acts chapter eight, it's Philip and the eunuch again, and it says, they believed Philip and then they were baptized. Acts chapter 18, Crispus, the synagogue leader and his whole household, they believed the message and then they were baptized. And that's what we practice here at Two Rivers. The people that are being baptized today, right? They're not being saved by being baptized. There's nothing special about this water. They've already been saved by Jesus. They've believed and placed their faith and trust in Jesus. And so we're going to baptize them today and celebrate with them as they stand and publicly acknowledge the fact that they are now on the Jesus team, that they are followers of Jesus. Last question is simply this. When should I be baptized? And my answer to that would be as soon as you believe in Jesus, right? Like that's when you're baptized is after you've placed your faith and trust in Jesus to be obedient to the scriptures, then you go through the waters of baptism to show that you're dying to your old way of life and raising to a new way of life with Jesus as Lord and Savior. And that's what we're getting ready to celebrate here today. So two things as I end. Some of you are like, you're ending? And I'm like, yeah, they only gave me a 20-minute clock today. 
Number one, if you're in this room, if you're watching online, and I've moved really fast today, but I'm telling you, if you've never placed your faith and trust in Jesus, if you've never cried out and said, oh God, thank you for loving me and not loving some better version of me out in the future, thank you for loving me on my very worst day because that's exactly what God did for me, for you, right? He loves the very worst version of us just because he loves us. We don't have to perform for God. It's not, hey, do all these things and then I'll love you. It's done. I love you and it's already done. I sent my son Jesus to pay the price and you just have to lean in that to have a relationship with him. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I would ask you today, please, 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 even today, I'm going to pray in just a second and then we're going to sing another song as we're getting folks ready to baptize. Like right now, you can pray and ask God to be your Lord and your Savior. And if you're not ready for that, you're not sure about that, you have questions, please come find us. We say it all the time. This is a very safe place to investigate the claims of Jesus, to have the Jesus conversation. We're always here for that. We want everyone to know Jesus. We want everyone to go to heaven, right? That's what we're about here. So please come talk to us. Secondly, I would say to you today, um, if you have been saved, but you've never been baptized, I would encourage you to do that. It's a beautiful act of obedience to be celebrated by the church together. You're gonna see that here in just a second. So what I wanna say to you all today, nothing against high church, but we're not high church around here. You can probably tell that already. And so when we baptize people around here, it is something to be celebrated. There are 18 people that are about ready to come in front of us as their church family and say, I'm on the Jesus team and I want everybody to know. And we get pretty excited about that around here. So when they come up out of the water today, I want to tell you it is completely appropriate in this room for you to stand, yell, clap, cheer, holler. If you need to get up on your chair to make sure they see you, go ahead, have at it. If you get too crazy, I'll let you know, but I think we're going to be okay. This is something to be celebrated today as 18 people stand before us in this service and say, I want everybody to know that I love Jesus. You pray with me. Father, thank you. What a privilege. Like every Sunday is awesome, but man, baptism Sundays are most awesome, most spectacular as we celebrate with all these folks today who are getting ready to go through the waters of baptism. We thank you, Jesus, for the cross and for your shed blood, and that's where salvation comes from. It's from you, Jesus, and all that you did for us and showed us the most incredible love and mercy and grace that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us. And may that story never become old or stale, but every day may it hit us right in the heart as we think about how incredible it is that you would love us. And so, Lord, we're excited now to sing this next song and then just to baptize all the folks today. May this day be a very, very special day for them as we celebrate with them. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All from
Am I on? I'm on. I'm down here. How we doing, y'all? Awesome. Before we get started, hang on real quick. Before we get started, I want to reiterate what Pastor Ron said, but I want to say it in a different way. There are 19 people getting baptized, and I don't say that to say, look at us. I say that to say, when there's that many people, here's what I've witnessed. The first two get like our greatest cheers. By the 19th, it's like, yay, hey. Every person is a soul that's come from darkness to light because of Jesus Christ. And every person I think requires, or not requires, but should demand our, our biggest applause and excitement, okay? Here we go now, all right, help me welcome Jillian. All right, Jillian, what an honor and a privilege to baptize you today. What a special day. So Jillian, I'm gonna ask you but we ask everyone before we baptize them, do you know for sure, Jillian, that you've asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Yes. All right. And it's because of that that I baptize you now, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Awesome. 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 All right. Next, we got a mother and a daughter. Everybody say hi, Ashley, and hi, Audrey. Come on down, Ashley. Hi, Ashley, good morning. So uh, they told me I can't talk much before I baptize people because we're on a clock, but I do just have to tell you this. Ashley's a photographer, and she took on the project this summer 
of doing a family photograph for the Cathcart, all of them, kids, grandkids, which was like herding cats. And it was about 120 degrees. And thank you. You did a great job, Ashley. It wasn't and that bad. You're <laughs> certain she, she saved after that, yes, right? Yeah, yeah. Holy Spirit She's like, I need Jesus. Yeah. I need Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, seriously, Ashley, what a privilege to baptize you today and to have gotten to know you. Uh, Ashley, do you know for sure that you've asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Yes, I have. All right, awesome. And it's because of that profession of, profession of faith in Jesus that I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Awesome, and now their daughter, Audrey, coming up with our <laughs> children's director, Ashley, here. Everybody say, hi, Audrey. Hi, hi, hi Ashley. There you go. Oh, Ashley, here. Thank you. There you go. All right, Miss Audrey, are you certain that you have asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Yes. It is because of that profession of faith that I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> awesome. All right, we have another family here. Come on down. First is Alicia. Everybody say hi, Alicia. Yeah. Alicia, do you know for sure that you've asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Yes. All right. And Alicia, it's because of that profession in Jesus that I baptize you name in, now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Woo! Harrison, you're next, brother. Come on in. Everybody say hi, Harrison. Yeah. And Harrison is up here with Grandpa Fred. All Grandpa right. Fred. You going to baptize? All right. <laughs> you want me to talk and you put him under? All right. All are right. You, are you on good terms with your grandpa? That's good. I don't <laughs> make sure he doesn't hold you too long. We said 30 seconds. 30, 30 seconds. All right. Awesome. Enough hey. for the spirit to get really in there, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Harrison, real quickly, how old are you, man? 11. 11 years old. How awesome that at the age of 11, you're fully committing your life to Jesus and you've got the rest of your life to serve him. That's awesome. Amen. So, Harrison, um, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Great. And, Harrison, it's because of that that we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> All right, and Scarlett, to round it off. Scarlett, how are you? Everybody say hi to Scarlett. Let me help you down here. I think Ashley is coming back up. Yes. All right. All right, Miss Scarlett, and we asked your brother, how old are you? Nine years old. That is awesome. We are so very proud of you, Miss Scarlett. Scarlett, are you certain that you have asked Jesus to become your Lord and Savior? Yes. It is because of that profession of faith that I baptize you now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We got another family coming here. It looks like brothers, right? Yeah, Brandon, you're gonna go first? All right, everybody say hi to Brandon. I think Ashley is going to do the duties again. Yes, Brandon, come on in, brother. Awesome. Sit down. There you go, ma'am. Scoot up just a little bit. There you go. Perfect. And Brandon, how old are you? Ten. Ten years old. I love it. Brandon, are you certain that you have made Jesus your Lord and Savior? Yes. It is because of that profession of faith that we baptize you now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. All 
righty. And younger brother, Levi. Say hi to Levi. Hi, Levi. Come on down, buddy. All right. Yep, put your legs down. Yeah, plenty of room there. Plenty of room. Can you get him there, cameraman? All right. Also All right. known as Andy. Mr. Levi, how old are you? Six years old. Congratulations, yeah. buddy. Levi, are you certain that you have made Jesus your Lord and Savior? Yes. It is because of that profession of faith <laughs> that we baptize you now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Seen that right. <laughs> Everybody say hi to Rian. Ah. There you go, Katie. This is my sweet friend Rian. And just this morning, as someone was praying over her, they said she had this glow about her. I agree. And it is a light to shine before Jesus. Amen. So, Rian, have you placed your faith and trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. It is with that that I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes! Yes! Awesome, Rian. Tyler McKnight, come on down, brother. Everybody say hi to Tyler. Tyler, I think like half the church is here to witness this, so uh, here we go, brother. You got your mom and dad here, friends, family, everything. All right, brother, are you certain you've made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Yes. Awesome. With that profession of faith, my brother in Christ, your parents now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah, get him down there. <laughs> you got one? Tessa, hi Tessa. Everybody say hi to Tessa and her mother, Kristen. Awesome, yes. You want to come over here? You can do the baptizing. Yep, that way you're not. Yes. All right, Tessa, one question. Are you certain you made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Yes. Awesome. With that profession of faith, our sister in Christ, your mother now baptizes you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes. <laughs> All right, Cameron, come on down, buddy. Cameron and Dad, everybody say hi, Cameron. All right. Come on, there's a little hole here. Keep going. There you go, buddy. All right, Cameron. You ready? Yeah. Awesome. How old are you? Eight. Eight. All right. Hopefully the, question, the answer to this question is quicker than that one. Okay, ready? Uh, are you certain you've made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Awesome, brother. With that profession of faith, my brother in Christ, your dad will now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You want to hold your nose? That's what he's asking you. All right, there you go. Yes. <laughs> yes. Great job. All right. Father and daughter here. Justin, come on down. Yes. You can take those. Oh, yep, we're going to take That's okay. Yeah. You're not the first. All good, brother. Everybody say hi to Justin. Awesome. That's All right, brother, you can sit down. It's warm. That's good, right? <laughs> That's good. All right, man. This is awesome. Your wife and uh, son were a couple months ago, and now it's you and your daughter. Beautiful, man. Well, Justin, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? With that profession of faith, my brother in Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes. I'm good. Happy for you, man. You bet. You can come right. Get that. Yep. Ruby will help you up, and your dad will join me here in a minute. Everybody say hi to Ruby. I thought you were going to, like, dive in there. That was awesome. All right, Ruby, you want to come over here, Justin? You're welcome to. 
Actually, come on this side. Oh, you know what? Yep, come on this side. There we go. All right, you ready? Are you certain you've made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Awesome, Ruby. With that profession of faith, my sister in Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Keep going. There we go. Amen. Amen. All right, James. <laughs> Everybody say hi, James. Yeah. There you go, brother. How are you? Just fine. Just fine. I'm excited for you today. I'm you better, can scoop for you. Good, good. Fine. James, all right. You certain you've made Jesus Christ your Lord? Absolutely. And I don't Absolutely. even have to finish the question. <laughs> With that profession of faith, my brother in Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. You bet. You bet. Thank you. Yes. Uh, All right. Kaimani. Everybody say hi to Kaimani. You don't know this, but Pastor Ryan was really admiring your hair. He just couldn't stop looking at it, man. I kind of am too. Kamani, you ready, brother? Yes. Awesome. Are you certain you've made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Yes, I have. Awesome. With that profession of faith, my brother in Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, man. All right, we're rounding them off here. Isabella, everybody say hi to Isabella. Hi. Yeah, accompanied by our youth pastor, Brandon. Here you go, buddy. Awesome. Whoa, you good? Yeah. <laughs> awesome, well this is uh, Bella. Bella came to summer camp this summer and really um, gave her life to Jesus and now she's all in. So Bella, are you certain you have surrendered your life to Jesus and you wanna follow him? Yeah. Awesome. Well, Bella, because of your profession of faith in Jesus, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Here. Awesome. All right, Adeline. Everybody say hi to Adeline. All right, Natalyn is up here with Nancy. It's her youth leader, right? Yes. Yes, awesome, you wanna scoop forward? Keep going, keep going, there you go, all right. So Addie, I am so thankful that you are part of our youth group. Your love and kindness just shows the love of Jesus every time I'm around you. Amen. Um, Addie, have you decided to make Jesus your Lord and Savior and to follow him? Yes. Since you've made that decision, Addie, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Woo! Nancy, here we go. All right, and one more. Ellie just decided this morning she is ready to be baptized. So help me welcome Ellie and say hi to Ellie. And her dad, John, here, my little friend. How you doing, John? Doing good. Yeah, yeah. All right, Ellie, you ready? Scoop forward a little bit. Oh, mom's over there too. Hi, mom. <laughs> Ellie, are you certain you made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Awesome. With that profession of faith, our sister in Christ, your dad now baptizes you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You all may stand. You all did a great job. <laughs> you did a great job, seriously. How amazing, how good is our God? I mean, that's 18 people, that's 18 souls. I said it earlier, let's not forget this. As we go and worship one more time, singing about the goodness of God, that is 18 souls that were in darkness, not knowing truth and not knowing light that have been brought to truth and brought to light miraculously through the power 
of the Holy Spirit made available through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let me pray. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> First off, for just your goodness. There are not enough words or I think even the proper words to fully describe just you, God, and how great you are, how good you are, how magnificent, how merciful, how gracious, how loving I could go on and on, how big you are, and yet how big you are, yet you still are intimately involved in every moment of your children's lives. Father, thank you for those 18 souls. This is just the beginning for them, Lord, of a process that is lifelong. And I pray, Father, now through the power of the Holy Spirit that resides in them, the promise that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ, that that Holy Spirit is so filling them up on a regular basis, illuminating truth in a world of lies and deception. Father, as the church, you have called us, family and friends, brothers and sisters, to also help in that, to encourage, to equip, to comfort, to pray for, Father. Fill us up so we can continuously do that for those that you have surrounded us with, Lord. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for this time together, Lord. And now we, as the little bit we have, give it back to you in our breasts and in our worship because you are good. Father, we love you. And we ask this all in the mighty, powerful, and precious name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. amen.